Welcome to Section 1-4, Solving Inequalities. Whether you're my student or not, this video should help you solve inequalities of the simple variety and the compound variety. So let's start jumping into some of these problems. Here we have to solve the inequality and graph the solution. You notice that we have two fractions in this problem, and you can eliminate these fractions by looking at the denominator. We have a denominator of 3 and a denominator of 4. To get rid of that, we're going to multiply the entire equation by 12. The reason we use 12, it's the least common multiple of the denominators. Now we distribute that 12, 12 times 2 thirds, gives us 8. We don't distribute to the 4x and the plus 5 because that's in a second set of parentheses. Then we distribute to the 9 fourths, so we need to do 12 times 9 fourths, which will give us 27x. Now we distribute the 8. 8 times 4x is 32x, and 8 times 5 is 40. We bring down the rest of the inequality, the greater than the 27x. Since we have variables on both sides, we eliminate one of them. I choose to subtract 32x from both sides. Doing that eliminates the 32x from the left-hand side of the inequality, leaving the 40 bring down the greater than symbol and 27x take away 32x is negative 5x next we divide each side by negative 5 which leaves us with negative 8 here you gotta remember to flip the inequality when dividing by a negative which gives us a result x is greater than negative 8 to graph this We're going to need to make a number line. It doesn't have to be a complicated number line. In fact, I make it pretty simple. I just uh, make a number line, and the only number I put on that number line would be the negative 8. We use an open circle because negative 8 is not a part of the solution, and we will shade that number line to the right because x has to be greater than negative 8. In this problem, it's a compound inequality with the word and. That word and implies the intersection of these two inequalities. We'll discuss that when it comes time to graphing the solution. We first want to solve the inequality on the left. We start by adding 5 to both sides. And when we do that, the minus 5 and the plus 5 cancel, leaving the 3x, bring down the greater than or equal to symbol. And negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. We divide each side by 3 to eliminate the 3 in front of the x, giving us a result that x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Bring down the word and so we don't forget that it's an intersection. We solve this right inequality by adding 5 to both sides, giving us 3x is less than or equal to 6. Divide each side by 3 giving us x is less than or equal to 2. Since this is a compound inequality, we could rewrite this as one inequality, negative 1 is less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to 2. This intersection shows us that the value of x must be between negative 1 and 2. Here's my number line. I include only the two extremes, negative 1 and 2, on that number line, and we will use closed circles, and we will shade all the values in between the negative 1 and the positive 2. That is our solution to this inequality. Again, we use closed circles because of the equal part in the inequalities, meaning that the negative 1 and 2 are a part of the solution. Third problem, a research team estimates that 30% of the questionnaires will not be returned. How many questionnaires should they mail out in order to reasonably certain at least 750 will be turned? Well, key numbers here, 30% will not be returned. This is a bit of a trick question because the 750 represents the number that will be returned or 70% of the questionnaires. So we're going to be setting up an inequality with the 70%. 
Now here we define our variable. X is going to be equal to the number of questionnaires. Or the number of surveys that have been sent out. Remember, we want 750 back, so we take 0.7 times X, or 70% of the surveys, has to be greater than or equal to 750. That's an application of the percent equation. We divide each side by 0.7, giving us the result that X is going to be greater than or equal to. Now, this is approximately... Now, this is approximately equal to 1,072. So we need to send out at least 1,072 surveys to guarantee we're going to get 750 in return. Here we have a concrete slab that requires between 10 and 12 cubic yards of concrete. If 2.5 cubic yards of concrete can be poured each hour, how long will it take to pour the slab? So we need to find out a range of values. The minimum amount, well first we'll define our variable. H is going to be the number of hours to pour the concrete. We need a minimum of 10 cubic yards of concrete and 12, maximum of 12 cubic yards of concrete. That implies a compound inequality and in the middle we're going to take the number of cubic yards of concrete per hour, 2.5, and multiply it by H. That'll tell us how much concrete we can pour. To solve that we divide each section by 2.5. 10 divided by 2.5 is 4 which will give us 4 is less than 2.5 H divided by 2.5 is H, and 12 divided by 2.5 is 4.8. So it'll take between 4 and 4.8 hours to pour this concrete. If you are in my class and you would like some bonus, what you're going to need to do is write my name, but instead of spelling it P-I-L-A-R-S-K-I, -I, use the pi symbol for the P-I. So you'd write the pi and then L-A-R-S-K-I, write that down on a piece of paper, put your name on a piece of paper, and give it to me discreetly in class. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope this helped. If it did help, or if you found it interesting, please feel free to rate it, my video, or leave a comment.